arguing for the end of adult marijuana prohibition is easy because we have facts, science, reason, compassion, evidence, truth, and logic on our side. It is even easier when researchers catalog it all for us. Learn how to gather the facts on marijuana use, arrests, seizures, rehabs, drug tests, and more in this edition of Drug War Data Mining. 2014 may be looked back as the year the momentum for nationwide marijuana legalization hit the tipping point. Aside from marijuana becoming legalized in two more states, here are five sets of data points that seem to confirm that inevitability. Number one, national marijuana arrests decreased for the fourth year in a row. Not only is it the first time arrests have dropped four years in a row, but the total of 693,482 national marijuana arrests in 2013 is the lowest total in 15 years. During Barack Obama's presidency, there has been an overall 18% decline in the annual marijuana arrest total. The number one and number four greatest one-year declines in annual marijuana arrests have occurred on Obama's watch. Number two. Teen marijuana use in Colorado has dropped in two successive surveys. In 2009, the year Colorado's dispensary system began to flourish, the Colorado Healthy Kids Survey said 24.8% of teens said they used marijuana monthly. In 2011, that figure was down to 22%, and by 2013, after a year of legalization, the figure is down to 20%. Compare that with United States figures from 2009, 2011, and 2013, where the teen use of marijuana both lifetime and monthly has steadily increased, now overtaking the rates in the legal state of Colorado. The number three promising data point is that teenage marijuana use is falling while senior marijuana use has tripled. According to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, in 2002, there were 3.9 million teenagers aged 12 to 17 using marijuana annually. In 2012, that number had dropped by half a million. Over that same decade, use by seniors aged 50 plus increased from 1.6 million to 4.7 million, an increase of 3.1 million seniors. This isn't just due to the baby boomer demographic bubble that's aging every statistic, however. That teen annual rate dropped from 15.8% to 13.5%, while the senior rate increased from 2.1% to 4.6%, effectively doubling annual senior use. Among monthly marijuana consumers, teens dropped from 2 million to 1.8 million, and their rate dropped from 8.2% to 7.3%, while seniors increased from less than 1 million to 3.1 million, with a rate increase of 1.2%, to 3%. That's right, while the senior annual use rate doubled, the senior monthly use rate tripled. The number four promising data point is there is no longer majority support among any demographic for jailing pot smokers, and the overall majority of Americans favors legalization. By age, race, and politics, there is solid support for the idea of decriminalization that possession of small amounts of marijuana for personal use should not be subject to jail time. According to the Pew Research Center's report, America's New Drug Policy Landscape, more than three out of four Americans believe in no jail for pot, with 69% of Republicans, 63% of seniors 65 and older, and 60% of Hispanics offering the least support for decrim. Over four in five of those aged 18 to 29 and aged 50 to 64 support decrim. Meanwhile, there were nine polls asking about legalization support in 2014, and only two came up below 50%. One that was a 48-47 plurality, and another that was a 49-48 plurality. And the poll average in 2014 was 52% support for marijuana legalization nationwide. And finally, the last most telling data point for 2014's tipping point on marijuana is not only do Americans believe marijuana is safer than alcohol, they think it's safer than sugar. According to a Wall Street Journal poll, Americans find marijuana less harmful than sugar. Given a choice of four popular substances, tobacco was listed by almost half of the respondents, or 49%, as the most harmful, followed by alcohol in second place with 24%, and sugar in third place with 15%. Marijuana was considered the least harmful with just 8% of respondents raking it the most harmful substance. 
And speaking of sugar, three studies now have shown that marijuana consumers are at less risk for diabetes and have lower body mass indexes and prevalence of obesity compared to non-tokers. Folks, those are the facts that prove the inevitability of marijuana legalization has been reached. We are past the tipping point. There's no going back now. You can find all these stats and graphs at HighTimes.com and RadicalRust.com. 420 Radio.